And hi, everybody. I'm here today with Owen Culper, and it's his birthday. So happy birthday, Owen. How are you today, sir? I am slightly older, but uh, I'm feeling younger for talking to you. So it's good to be here, virtually <laughs> here. Feeling younger for talking to me. Oh, flattery right out of the gate. I love it. <laughs> That's my strategy for the whole talk. Flattery. <laughs> Excellent. Well, let's just jump right into it. So um, let's start here. Can you tell me the story of how did you sort of break into writing and land your first literary agent? Well, um, I had been trying for years to get a book published, first of all. And then I eventually got a book published. Uh, I was living in Africa, in Tunisia. Uh, and the story kind of happened before me every day. So it was one of those stories where you don't have to invent. It's, it's outside the window. Um, and that was the first book I got published. So armed with that book, I went to try and find a literary agent. And uh, I called. Um, I read someone told me that you should call the agency and say, I'm going to send in my manuscript or my book. And who exactly should I post it to? And that was a really good tip. Because I called up the agency and uh, in London, and an Irish girl answered the phone. So I played up, I hammed up the Irish accent. It was, oh, Bigara, how are you today, <laughs> Leprechaun? And uh, I said, who should I send this book to? And she said, you should send it to my boss, Sophie. Uh, and uh, this was literally the first agent I had sent it to. And I think when you find the right book and you connect with the right person at the right time, uh, magic can happen, and I was very, very, very lucky. Um, I'd had many rejections from my previous books. Six books never got published because they were so bad. Um, six books? You, had six six, books yeah. you wrote six books before you published your first book. Yeah, yeah, uh, and uh, I had written all sorts from uh, uh, crime books to comedy to legends to mythology, and nothing, nothing worked for me un until I think... I wrote something real, uh, 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 and then I began to find my own voice. For my first two books, I was trying to write like Edgar Rice Burroughs, and and then my my yeah. second two books, I was trying to write like um, you know Thomas Harris. And eventually, when I got to my first book, I I was just trying to write a book, a story from my heart. And I think once you stop trying to write like somebody else and you try to find your voice, then that works for you. That's very well said. And you think that, um, I, I mean, it seems like there's an ingredient of tenacity and perseverance that's also embedded in this right here. If you wrote six books before, you know, getting your seventh finally in the hands of an agent and published, that shows a lot. Well, that is one thing that's kind of changing now. I've met several people, and I bet you you have too, Alan, where they said to me, they said to you, well, I sent it, I wrote a book. I sent it to two publishers. They didn't take it, so I'm self-publishing. You know, and I think that's really not the way to go. Not that early, where I think you need to go through some kind of process where you hone your craft and eventually you strip away everything and you arrive at this little book, which is, you know, I've never written a perfect book, and but I'm that's what I'm striving for. I'm probably never get there, but um, but now people are saying, well. These publishers, these editors, they don't know what they're talking about. I'm gonna, I'm just putting it on Amazon or whatever. I'm just gonna publish it myself. Uh, and maybe eventually you will have to do that, but I think you should try maybe two or three books first. That's really, really interesting right there because it's almost like the apprenticeship of learning the craft that you're speaking of, and by getting into, you know, a cook doesn't just become a master chef without you know burning some toast now and then and you, yeah. a lot of young writers are bypassing the toast burning section of their career and I guess maybe they never become a, an, a, an exceptional sous chef in the way because you know without going through that school of hard knocks is, is that right. what we're talking about? I really like how you did that extended cookery metaphor you see <laughs> that's why you are where you are <laughs> Yes, that's why I'm where I am, and that's why you are the author of Artemis Fowl. That is, 
<laughs> That's right. Um, um, yeah, that, what you said is exactly right. I think people are just jumping over that apprenticeship and going straight for uh, you know going straight for the finished article, and occasionally once in a blue moon that works. Uh, I mean, it's getting published in the first place is once in a blue moon. So actually, getting get you know get, getting a book in a good state without having apprenticed, you know, that's once in a blue moon eclipse, which I'm sure is incredibly rare. And uh, you can count on the fingers of one hand the people who have who have managed to achieve that. I mean, it has been done, but I think it's rare now. It's rare. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I mean, I don't want to poo-poo sort of self-publishing because I, I, I actually am a believer in the medium, but. I'm not a believer in the idea of publishing crap, and that's what we're talking about. Is you know, it, there are some self-published books that are very sharp, but they've brought in editors and a lot of people, and it's not their first rodeo type of thing. And and there's a difference. Exactly. I have a very good friend of mine who's a fantastic writer. His name is Paul O'Brien, and he has published uh, self-published two wrestling novels. And they've been picked up by TV, and he's got a great deal. And uh, but he had written 17 plays before that, and he he approached self-publishing as a business. He said, "I know the internet inside out." He said, "I can publish these books and make you know and sell more copies and make more money uh, than if I give it to a publisher." And he wasn't just saying that because he'd sent it to a lot of publishers. It he actually did, and he, he sold 25,000 copies, you know, 25,000 uh, copies online, and, and now he's been picked up for TV. So I think, yes, you can do a good self job self-publishing, but if it's kind of an act of petulance, and uh, then it often doesn't work. That's very well said, and and I think that you also tapped into another idea that's really important is the notion of being nice to the assistants to the agents and sort of the way you buttered them up and used because they really are you know the the grease to the wheels in so many ways that opens doors and people sort of don't recognize that. No, these guys are like the civil servants in government, you know. They keep it. They keep everything going, and and in very often uncredited, they are agents. Really, they're like sub agents because very often the agents will say to her assistant, "Could you just read five or six pages of this, <laughs> and if it's any good, pass it along." And that happens all the time, and we know that. Uh, so be nice to everybody. That's my motto. You know, just, just, just why not be nice? Why not? That is a great tip. That is a great tip.